I'm CBS2 and Black Fox frontman Damon Ranger. The Chicago musical community just celebrated a birthday. Metro Smart Bar just turned 25 years old. I had an opportunity to sit down with owner Joe Shanahan, and he took me through the past 25 years. I've been coming to this address for half of my life. I've been coming to this address to do something that I still think needs to be done. What was the first big show, the first, like the first major act, the first big thing that came to the Metro? R.E.M. 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 was the first show that I promoted in this room. You know, they were pioneering, you know, in their van, you know, Mike and Michael and Bill and Peter just, you know, with their manager Jefferson driving and they just went from city to city kind of like uh, minstrel-like, you know, picking up uh, odd gigs here and there. And it was actually a canceled show. It was a show that was supposed to happen at another club that had fallen apart. And I had met them in New York at uh, a friend's club called the Danceteria. And I had gone back and, and met the band after the show and said, you know, if I ever had this crazy dream that I'm going to open a music venue in the city of Chicago, I'm going to open this the great rock club. And if I ever do, I want you to play there. We exchanged cards and phone numbers and things like that. And uh, I actually got a phone call from them, you know, saying, hey, this show has fallen through. Would you be interested in, in, in helping us, you know, put a show together? And I was like, oh, yes, sure. What does that mean, you know? <laughs> okay, we'll charge $5. I took a, an ad in the reader and, and, you know, crossed my fingers and hoped for the best. And uh, it was a great moment for me because at the end of the night, you know, when we're all sitting around having some beer and pizza and it, people showed up and people had a good time and people danced. Um, I'm not sure anybody really made any money that night, but it, you know, it was really more about that we pulled it off and it happened. And that excitement really snowballed into what we felt was, you know, what we wanted to do in this building. I've always looked to, you know, other musical scenes, you know, in, around the world to sort of um, maybe use as guideposts or as um, some r the rails, so to speak, to keep this train sort of moving forward. We were doing you know, DJ culture or DJ world, or you know, mm -hmm. in 1982 by bringing you know DJs from New York like Africa Mambada and the Soul Sonic Force. That was the first DJ that we ever brought to Chicago to have performed. You know, I, I harken back to the idea that when Iggy Pop was sort of re-entering the music community um, in the 80s, you know, uh, he picked Metro as the place to sort of, you know, go. Why? Well, he read about it, he knew about it, he had friends that had come here, it had a good reputation. So I think a lot of it is word of mouth, word of mouth. In, in, on the fan base side, on the music fan base side, as well as the, fan, uh, the, the bands themselves, they talk to each other. I mean, I think that that's a big part of our success. Besides being a music venue, you say it connects people? Yeah, it does. So it's kind of like a social networking center. Lots of really great people, you know, meet here, you know. I mean, you know, whether it's the legendary Kurt and Courtney start or just people that, you know, I was in New York recently. I went to an art gallery and uh, there was this couple and they had their daughter with them. And she came up to me and said, you're Joe Shanahan from Chicago. I said, yeah. She said, oh, yeah, you know, I met my husband and, at Metro, and this is our daughter, and we fell in love and have a baby now, and we met at Metro. I met my wife here. Something, something's, <laughs> something's in the water, something's in the ice cubes. I don't know. <laughs> A lot of unsigned bands say this is the place that they dream of coming to play when they, when they first pick up a guitar, at least in the Chicago area. I mean, how does that make you feel? Well, it's interesting you say that because one of my, one of my close friends in the music industry or in our, I prefer maybe this the music community, is uh, Billy Corrigan. And he still talks about that story about how, you know, when he got to Chicago, he lived here in Wrigleyville and went to baseball games at Wrigley Field and wanted to play at Metro and that was that was what he felt would be his success when he got a gig at Metro. Of course great things have happened for him and he's an example of someone who's always come back, performed here, you know, either put a support a local support band on one of his shows. It's called giving back. I think musicians in general remember I at one time I was that kid 
handing a CD or a tape to Joe Shanahan in the lobby of Metro. First pumpkin demos. So this is this is what he sent here. This is what he gave me. This is the first one. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. He began to give me basically, you know, a series of anywhere from five to ten songs a week. So obviously he was prolific. He had lots of songs. Some of Joe's favorite shows at the Metro were the last Smashing Pumpkin show was 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 remarkable because of the gravity of it. Uh, the last time those members were together, um, you know, a f four hour plus event. Uh, national, international coverage. I think about New Order, when New Order first played here, I mean, that was wonderful. And, and the first R.E.M. show, I mean, still it was a great show. As a matter of fact, I had them recorded that from the board and played it for Mike Mills one time. And we had a laugh about it. He says, I can't believe we were that bad. <laughs> I'm like, it was a great night. But, um, but I mean, the Ramones, I mean, you know, the Ramones shows that were here. Um, and now that basically that band doesn't exist anymore right. and the members are no longer with us. I mean, how quickly, you know, time shows you that it's fleeting and grab onto it, you know? Iggy Pop, I mean, come on, that was, you know, he is just one of the greatest rock and roll icons of, of contemporary you know, music. I mean, Prince, when Prince played here, I mean, that was another thing that, you know, they he played until four o'clock in the morning. I mean, the police were ready to turn on the <laughs> lights and throw us all in jail. And it was like, who's going to pull the plug on Prince? <laughs> of course, he stopped right at 3.59 and we were safe. I'm like really excited about the Twilight Singers and we booked this show. It's on my birthday. My good friend Todd Caston, you know, was the buyer at the time. We set up this little after show party in my office with champagne and cake. And they've totally surprised me because I'm not aware of this the whole night. You know, my wife's here with some friends. We're just having a ball. Greg does an amazing show. At the end of the night, we go up to my office, surprise party for me, surprises me. And, and we just start drinking, having fun, cake. DJing, Todd starts spinning records. Greg comes in, he starts spinning records. The whole band jumps in. So it turned into this great thing. So I had these records on the wall. And I had these records like Sinead O'Connor and Prince and Depeche Mode, New Order, R.E.M. And they were signed to me, you know, to, to Joe for Metro, uh, Metro or Metro to Joe, whatever. And these sort of souvenirs, I had them framed on this one wall. And Greg, like, saw this and, and, and like, you know, I don't know, I guess he kind of took it as a, an opportunity. So Monday morning when I come in, he has, he, has, he has written on the wall, hey, Joe, where the f*** is my album? How come you've never asked me for my autograph? And I stood there, it was like, you know, it was like the birthday's done, the dust is settled. Show was over, and I'm standing there Monday morning, 8 o'clock, by all by myself in my office. And they stand there, and they just burst out laughing. I was laughing hysterically until, like, the building manager basically said, Are you okay? <laughs> I was like, Do you see what this guy did? He just wrote on our walls. <laughs> I also kind of wonder, was there any band Metro passed on, or any band that they regretted not having here? I remember when uh, Nirvana um, was uh, slated to play here on the release of Nevermind. And we actually had a, um, you know, we had a choice between these two shows. I won't mention the other band because it wouldn't be fair to them. But um, but it was one of these things where I said, well, maybe we'll do an early show and a late show, and everyone same date, everyone will be happy. And the one, it was an English band. They absolutely wouldn't be hearing of this kind of thing. It was this Nirvana. I was like, I, I like this Nirvana band. <laughs> I like them a lot. And uh, we had already done some shows with with. Uh, with the band, so we were Seen looking forward to it. Legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we were, we were we were interested in that. Um, uh, we, you know, it's interesting. We don't really pass on a lot of things. We try to always work it out with with, with bands. It can be just a, a conflict in dates. Passing is something that I have to say is not really part of what our business model is. Because you know, one um, one band one year can be a group of guitar players, bass player, drummer, and then splinter off into something else and. The, you know, if you passed on that guitar player's first band or second band, you know, I think that that leads to a road of sort of, you know, maybe a little uh, unfair sort of, uh, or you know, pessimistic or, or maybe even negative, you know, sort of feeling. So we try to keep that. Uh, passing is not something you really do. So as you can see, every time these doors are open, history is being made. We're here. We like being here. Um, it's, uh, you know, foot forward and, um, you know, I feel that uh, 25 years was 
not easy, but it was really fun. So I'm gonna sign on for some more fun years. For more info, go to MetroChicago.com. Reporting for CBS2Chicago.com, I'm Damon Ranger.